All right, everyone. Now, there is a storm rolling in through Scotland at the minute, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to stick on a wet weather tyre because I'm still on my summer set. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to try a tubeless system which I came up with a couple of years ago. I tried it on my arcade bike and it guaranteed I didn't get any burps of any air and it even protected my sidewalls a little bit more. I also have it on good authority that this system was used or at least tried by Aaron Gwynn because I think, again, from what I've heard, he was struggling with burping air quite a lot on the World Cup circuit. It was costing him some time. He was getting flat tires and so on. A friend of mine saw my system. He thought it was amazing. He told a mutual friend of ours who works on the World Cup circuit as a mechanic. He spoke to Aaron Gwynn's mechanic and supposedly they liked the idea, have tried it. And again, I don't know if this is true or not, but supposedly Aaron Gwynn has used this system. So I don't want them to keep us a secret. I want to get credit for it. So I'm going to tell you guys exactly what it is. There is a disclaimer though. This solution isn't for everyone. If you like to change tires a lot, then perhaps it's not for you. Although if you have a couple of wheels, this could work pretty well. Also, you may notice the start of this system is exactly like the homemade tubeless system with a stretched inner tube. If you know how to do that, I'll put a number down below. That is where to skip to in the video. And then you can get to the really important bit, which totally transforms this system. Before we start, there's gonna be a few bits you need. So here it is. All right, you will need a 20 inch inner tube with the correct valve for your rim. You'll need a clean-ish rag, some disc brake cleaner, or just electronic contact cleaner will do as well. A nice sharp pair of scissors, some tire sealant, and I like to use one of these syringes which puts the sealant in through the valve. You'll also obviously need a tire, a tire insert of your choice, if you even want to run one and obviously you need a wheel. Don't worry if it's not tubeless compatible, this system doesn't rely on a fully sealed rim. You'll need a decent pump or a tire inflator. And a secret ingredient, you'll need some rubber contact cement or at least some way of gluing rubber to itself which is flexible. Okay, to start you need to grab your inner tube and get it partially inflated. Just like you would if you were fitting an inner tube normally. Like I said before, don't worry if your rim isn't completely tubeless compatible. This system should work with rims with cutouts like fat bikes or trials bikes as the inner tube completely seals the rim for you. Insert the valve into the hole and stretch the inner tube over the rim. There should be a seam on the inner tube. Try and make this central to the rim. It may have got twisted, so just give it a bit of an untwist where needed. Next up, get your sharp pair of scissors, find the seam in the center of the inner tube and cut along that. That is your guide. When the inner tube deflates, this seam may go off to one side, but as long as you keep on that seam, your inner tube will be symmetrical. Once fully cut, splay the edges over the rim on both sides. This is where having a small inner tube like a 20 inch is really handy as it will naturally want to splay over the rim like this. You may find the inner tube is absolutely covered in dust. I tend to use soap and a bit of water just to wipe that away, get back down to the rubber this will give a better seal when you're trying to inflate the tire. Once that's fully wiped down, you'll notice it's gone a lot darker. That just creates a much, much better seal. Next up, insert your tire just like you would a normal wheel. Although in this case, the tire I wanted to use was way too tight a fit. I applied a bit of soap to try and give it a bit of lube, but no matter how hard I tried, I just could not get this tire to fit. In the end, I decided to take off the rim tape I had on here. It was just one layer of Gorilla Tape. And then I fitted a much thinner rim tape. The idea being that it gives a tire a little bit more room to play with. 
I refitted the stretched inner tube and I tried again. Unfortunately, this still didn't work and I could not get this tire to go onto this rim. I even tried another brand to see if it was a tire, but no, this just didn't work either. It seems that this system is very sensitive to how tight your tire fits. In the end, I did try and use some tie levers and I cut the inner tube I had. So I put a new inner tube on and I even left the dust on there to see if that would act as a bit of a lube. I actually then resorted back to my old tire, which I knew was a bit of a baggier fit. And after a bit of a fight and a bit of a battle, I did eventually get it to fit. And even though I've not shown it, it's worth mentioning that I did fit my tire insert just like you would when you're normally fitting a tire. Once that battle was completed, I then tried to inflate it with my pump. Fortunately, with a little bit of fiddling, I could get it to inflate with just a normal pump. Once the tire beads had popped into place, I let the air out and added my tire sealant. I pumped it back up, which was a bit easier now that some of the beads had been seated. Now I just wiped down any excess and used some of the contact cleaner or disc brake cleaner just to clean off any last bit of the residue or oil that might be on the tire or the inner tube. You want these to be as clean as possible for this next step. You could even try to use sandpaper just to roughen up the surfaces like you would when applying a punch repair kit to an inner tube. Okay, this next step is where it starts to get a little bit different. If you've skipped forward to this bit, welcome back. This is when we get our rubber cement and have at it around the rim. You wanna have a nice even coating on the flap of inner tube that's hanging out and on the tire sidewall. Go around the rim and once you've given it enough time to dry, stretch the inner tube back over the tire and it should stick instantly. Now when I say stretch, I don't actually mean fully stretch the inner tube up, I mean just pull it up and over. If you start to stretch it, the elastic effect of the inner tube will start to pull against the glue. So you want it to naturally fold over and just rest against the tire. Try not to get your fingers on the glue like I'm doing here, but as long as you've left it long enough to dry and you've got a nice even coating, it should stick with no problems. Once you've gone all the way around and you've got all the inner tube stuck to the tire, go around and press that inner tube onto the tire. You really, really want a, a good connection between the two. The more you press, the better it's gonna be. Next step, if you wanted to, is you can clean off the excess because bear in mind that if you've got a layer of glue stuck in your tire, it's gonna pick up all the crap when out riding. And if you want a little bit more peace of mind, you can even add a little bit more glue around the joint. I've added one layer of extra glue on one side of the rim and I've actually left the other side completely clear. And it'll be interesting to see the difference in how much crap gets picked up. And this is what it should look like when it's done. It's pretty handy because the inner tube now acts as a bit of extra support for the tire, so it should resist cutting a little bit nicer as well. This system isn't as stealthy as a tire insert, you know, you can see there's an inner tube stuck to the outside, but it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. But do be prepared to answer a lot of questions out on the trails. So there you go everyone, I just skipped the second half, but that is my tire and inner tube fully glued up. Now I can push this bike in the corners as hard as I like and this tire ain't going anywhere. That air in it is gonna stay exactly where I put it. Now obviously this system isn't for everyone. I found out on this one that it is very tire dependent. I actually really, really struggled and found it practically impossible to do it with the original tire I had planned, hence why I'm on my old tire. Essentially, you need a tire that's a loose enough fit on the rim that you can get it on with the inner tube still there. If you have to use tire levers, you're probably gonna cut the inner tube and it'll be useless. And there is the fact that it is really hard to change the tire now. Obviously, I can just cut the inner tube, pull it off. This glue isn't super permanent, so it can just pull off. And this tire will be reusable again, and I can reuse this system again, just with a new inner tube. But if I was doing just everyday riding, I probably wouldn't have this. I would only have this system if tire burping was a serious problem, or if I was entering a race and I just wanted to do everything I could to not get a puncture. 
If you've been watching the World Cup downhill for the last couple of years, you'll know that punctures are still a thing and it's, yeah, it's been an absolute nightmare for a few of the top guys who have lost out on some big results because they've got punctures or burped air. And I think a system like this, even though it is a pain in the ass, even though it is you know, pretty tire dependent, I think it's still worth doing if you can and if you do not want to get punctures on your race run. So folks, you saw it here first. I don't know whether Aaron Gwynn does use this system or not. It's just what I heard. If you guys know if he does, you know, let me know. If you guys try this at home, let me know how it went for you. I've seen some hybrid tires which actually have a zip system so you can change it from like a wet weather tire to a slick dry tire. Imagine that, but with an insert so that you could just zip off the insert, change your tire, put a new tire back on, zip it back on, and your tire can't fold or burp air. That'd be amazing. I will be getting out on the bike and trying this wheel and this system and seeing how it goes. I did try it on my arcade for about a year and it was absolutely faultless. So I just need to go and see if it works on the mountain bikes, which, you know, I see no reason why it wouldn't. So there you go, everyone. That is that system. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It is a late video, I know, I'm sorry. It just took me so long to make that. Honestly, it was an absolute nightmare, but it's done. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will try my best to get something interesting done for next week. So yeah, go out, ride your bikes, ride fluent, and I'll catch you next time. See you later, everyone.